What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, so moving right along, we're working in Studio One version 4.1 Professional today, and I wanted to take a moment to talk about two specific features that just happen to work really well when used in tandem with each other. And that is one of the new note selection macros that we have available in Studio One version 4, which is lowest. And in addition, we have another function which is actually not available in any of these menus, but we can find it in the Studio One shortcuts, which is invert selection. They're actually quite powerful when you use them together. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and close our editor. Let's just talk about invert selection and what it means and what it does. Well, essentially, it's pretty simple. If we make a selection, and let's say that we wanted to actually select what is outside of this selection, I could go ahead and fire off invert selection. You'll see now that it has changed my selection. Now this works for single range selections, but also if we have multiple range selections that we've included and I fire this off, keep an eye on what's gonna happen here. It's just gonna invert that selection. So just like we would expect with Photoshop or any other applications like that. So that is when you're using it on an event basis. And this is the exact same regardless of whether you're working with audio or if you're working with instrument parts or MIDI events, whatever you want to call them, that's going to function the same way. All right, so let's go ahead now and get rid of that track and let's hop into what I wanted to take a look at in this video. So. Let's go ahead and open up our piano MIDI. I've got a track that I've laid out here, and actually I've put this together because I'm testing out this 808 custom kit that I've built over here. Let's have a quick listen. Okay, so just a simple track, kind of cool groove that I put together. What I like to do a lot is I will steal the bass notes from my main chords, which could be piano or a synth pad or anything like that. I will go ahead and steal those root notes and I like to layer in some sub bass, which is essentially what I've done here. Let's go ahead here. I'm just gonna bring in this other track really quickly and let's go ahead and let's just drag this MIDI down over here or rather this instrument part. And let's go ahead and redo our sub bass. So essentially I've got two different workflows that I usually use. One of them would be that I would open up, for example, my piano information and I could copy all of these events over here, just do a command C. And then I would double click to create a new instrument part in the track that I want and I could paste this information. And then of course, all I would have to do is put it in the proper octave and I'm good to go. But another thing that I like doing is I will also go ahead and just do an option or an alt drag to basically grab or borrow the MIDI information from this main track over here. Just go ahead and give this the same name and essentially bring it into my bass track. And then I would go ahead and I would just kind of remove everything that I don't need. And then of course, put it in the proper octave. And we're ready to go. Now, I wanna talk about using some of these new macro options that we have in version four. So there's a different way that we can do this. For example, if I go ahead and do the same thing, alter option, drag that MIDI event down to my sub bass track, and I'll go ahead and just rename this event over here. If you click this macro button over here and you're viewing page two, we've got some different options across page one, page two, and then page two, musical edit. If I go ahead and choose this lowest, watch what happens over here. So it selects the lowest notes in my chords over here. So that in itself is kind of useful, but essentially what we want to do is we only want to have the low notes. Now the interesting thing about the way that invert selection works is that if you're making range selections and you're working with events such as instrument parts or audio events, it will essentially invert that range selection. But when you're talking about note data, it will actually invert whatever is selected in terms of this note data over here versus what's not selected. So watch this. I just fired off that shortcut and it swapped out the selection. And then from here, of course, I could just go ahead and delete this, put these guys in the proper octave, and we're in business. So that in itself is pretty useful. But one thing to mention here is, as with any macro, 
If, for example, you wanted it to behave like that by default, let's go ahead and undo this over here. So we've option or alt dragged our instrument part down to the sub base. We could actually come into the macro organizer and as long as we find that macro, in this case, select notes lowest, we could go ahead and edit this and we could add those two commands into this macro. So the first one would be invert. I could go ahead, just find it, do a search and click add. And then the next one would just be a simple delete, edit, delete, go ahead and add that. We'll click OK. Now, if I was to fire off this macro, clicking this tab, because this macro is connected to this button, now I would essentially be able to do that in one step. So that's gone ahead and it's strung those commands together and it's doing it in one step. So just to see that in real time, this would be option or alt dragging this down here and then firing off our macro and we have our instant baseline. Just bring it up to the right octave. So the other thing to mention here about this is that Obviously, this is not just limited to lowest. We also have, for example, the highest. So this might be useful as well if you were, you know, working on taking a score or something that was developed on the piano and bringing it into different instruments, then you might want to do the opposite. So for example, let's go ahead and we'll option or alt drag down here again. In fact, I'm going to come back into this macro. I like this macro functioning the way it does. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove those two commands that I added because I can do it very quickly. I can just select the lowest and then invert my selection. But check out this. We can also, for example, select the highest. And then we could, of course, invert the selection over here. And then I could go ahead and delete this information and spread this out across different instrument tracks. So if, for example, I was working on a string part or something like that, it would be very easy for me to use some of these note selection macros to make my selection and then invert that selection. And essentially, this is really depending on whether you want to copy the information and then create a new instrument part and paste it in there, or whether you just want to option or alt drag your instrument part down and then make your selection, use the invert selection, and then delete it. So you're just left with that information. Again, six of one, half a dozen of the other, just two different ways to approach the same task. But regardless, just wanted to make note of these two functions and how they can be used together with respect to editing either instrument parts or audio events, and also the note data or the MIDI information that's contained within an instrument part. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. As always, I hope you guys got something from this video. Any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll do my best to get back to you, and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.